two important topics under oncology. One is BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, and second one is carcinoma of the prostate. Before going to our today class, I would like to briefly review about previous class. That is upper and lower GAT tumors. So, few questions regarding previous class. Briefly, first one is what is Barrett's esophagus? Is it benign or malignant condition? And second one, histopathologically, what is the characteristic nature of carcinoma esophagus? And coming to the carcinoma of the stomach, what are all the various risk factors for the development of carcinoma of the stomach? And what is some medical management of the carcinoma of the stomach? What is 5-fluorouracil? Indications and contraindications. And next coming to the lower GAT tumors, that is small intestinal tumors. Under small intestinal tumors, important tumors are carcinoid tumors. What is the main origin of carcinoid tumors? Why they are termed as carcinoid tumors? And next coming to the colon tumors, what is the mode of formation of colon tumors? characteristic nature of that colon tumors in the form of next one FAP what is adenomatous palipiasis is also one of the form of colon tumors what are the extra intestinal manifestations of familial adenomatous palipiasis extra intestinal manifestations Next, coming to the other one, what is desmoid tumor? Next, carcinoma of the rectum. What is the main etiology for the three rectum? And what are the various risk factors? Next, coming to the, what are the characteristic signs and symptoms of the Carcinoma of the rectum, characteristic symptoms. And next, what is Duke's criteria? These are all about questions, all questions briefly about previous class. Give your answers in the form of message at the end of your class. Now, today our topic is benign prostatic hyperplas hyperplasia this topic is important in the mind of theory examinations in the form of two marks person or short marks medical management management is very very important regarding bph you may get it as short marks or you may get it as two marks person So, what is the definition of uh, BPH? It is a condition, progressive enlargement of the prostate gland resulting from an increase in the number of size of epithelial cells and stromal tissue. From the beginning of, uh, from, uh, from the 40 years of age, the volume of prostate usually increases 2.4 centimeters by every year. So that, that is the normal development of uh, a prostate from the age of 40 years, usually 2.4 centimeters by the year. Usually this uh, uh, volume increasement of the prostate starts from the peripheral zone of the prostate, that are transitional zone of the prostate. So mainly that enlargement is due to the increase in number of epithelial cells and stromal cells of the pancreas. Next, coming to the uh, uh, coming to this uh, diagram, 
first uh, left side this one is normal prostate here observe the urethra and uh, that urethra is surrounded by prostate that the part of the urethra is called as prostatic urethra so in uh, normal condition the urethra is in normal size it is usually covered by the prostate but here on right side diagram that uh, urethra is covered by the enlarged prostate that is due to benign prostatic hyperplasia. So here observe the uh, urethra, prostatic urethra. It is, it, it became mostly narrowed in situation. So it is compressed by the surrounding prostatic gland hyperplasia. Hyperplasia. So compare these two diagrams. Here the urethra is normal in normal prostatic uh, gland, but here the urethra, the prostatic urethra is became narrow due to the compression by the prostate enlargement. That is the main pathophysiology. So here there is a obstruction to the normal urinary. Next coming to the etiology. Mainly it is due to, it is due to age related problem in males. So aging is the main etiological factor and excessive accumulation of the prostatic androgens. So androgens, hormonal causes excessive accumulation of androgen and family history another factor is family history and diet diet with animal fat and saturated fats diet increase with animal fats and saturated fatty acids so diet with these factors and reduced exercise and alcohol consumption are the other etiological factors and other factors it is associated with heart diseases and diabetes mellitus and smoking and it is associated with hypotension usually uh, most uh, medical conditions are associated with hypertension but here it is associated with hypotension remember this one hypotension heart disease and diabetes mellitus these are other comorbidities usually they occur in that age group 60 years these uh, comorbidities are usually associated with elder uh, people. So, these are all the etiological factors. So, age and hormone, hormones that, uh, that are androgen, excess uh, accumulation and family history and diet under diet, animal fat and saturated fatty acids consumption and reduced exercise and alcohol consumption. Next, coming to the pathophysiology. So, under pathophysiology, along with the uh, androgen levels, there may be also increased estradiol levels may have a relationship to the prostate size among the men. So, two hormones are responsible. One is estradiol and androgens. And another one is testosterone levels. Another third hormone above the median range. So, estradiol and testosterone and androgens play the most important role under pathophysiology. So hypertrophied lobes of the prostate usually obstruct the vesicle neck of the vesicle neck or prostatic urethra as already shown in the previous slide. So obstruction at the vesicle neck or prostatic urethra causing incomplete emptying of the bladder and followed by urinary retention. So as a result due to that urinary retention gradual dilatation of the ureter leads to hydrouretor due to the backflow of the urine leads to hydrouretor and hydro next hydronephrosis these are all these are these two are the main complications according to that pathophysiology and due to that urinary stasis chronic urinary stasis lead to urinary tract infections may result from urinary stasis due to chronic due to prolonged phase due to the uh, stage of that urine leads to urinary tract infections. Urine remaining in the urinary tract serves as a medium for the infect for the growth of the organisms. It acts as a medium for the growth of the infected organisms. So what are the various signs and symptoms of BPH? So these signs and symptoms of the BPH are divided into two. One, one is obstructive symptoms and next, uh, next one is irritative symptoms. So what are the various obstructive symptoms of the BPH? One is reduced pores of the urinary 
stream urine stream there is a reduced due to that obstruction there is a reduced urine stream and difficulty in initiating the voiding and the intermittency and next dribbling at the end of the urination so these are all obstructive symptoms if you enter the history then the patient usually told this used to tell these symptoms so this gives as clue to the diagnosis of bpkc dribbling at the end of the urination and a difficulty in initiation initiating the voiding and reduced urinary flow course of the urinary stream so next coming to the irritative symptoms one is frequency urgency and dysuria and bladder pain and nocturia excessive urination at the night and incontinence these are all irritative symptoms of the bpkc So next coming to the generalized symptoms first one obstructive symptoms and second one is irritating symptoms and next coming to the generalized symptoms of the bph fatigue anorexia nausea and vomiting and epigastric discomfort these are all generalized symptoms and what are all the complications of bph so due to that uh, obstruction there is a urinary retention is the one complication and urinary tract infections due to the chronic stasis of the urine and next uh, renal stones or uh, in the form of uh, kidney stones and renal stones or kidney stones next bladder damage due to that uh, pressure symptom of that uh, due to the excessive stasis of the urine and due to increased volume in the bladder leads to bladder damage and hydronephrosis and and pyelonephritis final complication hydronephrosis followed by pyelonephrosis and how do we diagnose this bph by history and by physical examination and next by digital rectal examination and urine analysis and urine culture and sensitivity and one of the important the tumor marker of uh, prostate is prostate specific antigen that is psa and transrectal ultrasound and urophilometry to know the characteristic nature of the urinary stream urophilometry and uh, measure the post viral residual urine and cytoerythroscopy these are all diagnostic uh, procedures in diagnosing in while diagnosing the bph next coming to the blood investigations are performed because of hemorrhage is the main or major complication during prostatic surgery so for that we have to exclude all clotting defects a high percentage of the patients with bph have cardiac or respiratory complications so we have to exclude all those complications because elderly um, uh, patients usually uh, associated with uh, Uh, respiratory complications diabetes and let us say and cardiac complications respiratory complications so we have to exclude all those things by ecg and echo and chest x ray dtc along with blood investigations next coming to the medical management of the bph this part this part of the bph is very very important so you may get uh, you may get the question in theory exams as what is the medical management of bph so you have to write all those things the main goals of uh, this medical management is we have to re restore the bladder function we have to restore the bladder function and relieve, relieve the signs and symptoms and prevent and treat the complications complications like hydronephrosis and uh, stones and all we have to relieve that complications and we have to prevent that complication the treatment of the treatment plan depends upon the cause of the bph and severity of the obstruction and the patient's general health condition so the treatment plan we have to decide according to the cause and severity of the obstruction and general health condition of the that patient if the patient is admitted uh, in an uh, on an emergency basis we have to um, catheterize that patient immediately so in an emergency we have to catheterize the patient there if the, that patient is unable to void the urine so there is a huge distension of the bladder so we have to catheterize the patient immediately in emergency basis 
and decrease the amount of intake of caffeine is also one of the important advice we have to give to the patient we have to reduce the intake of caffeine and artificial sweeteners and limit spicy and acidic foods and alcohol we have to avoid all those aggravating risk factors and next coming to the pharma classical therapy so the main uh, ideology of the uh, bph is hormonal excess so excess estrogens androgens and testosterone so we have to reduce those excess hormone levels with the help of alpha adrenergic blocker and alpha reductase inhibitors these are the two important drugs this type of medications uh, are used to relax the smooth muscle of the bladder neck and prostate the smooth muscle plaque is improve the flow and relieves the bph symptoms name uh, what are the examples for alpha adrenergic uh, blockers are alpojosin and tamoxifen these are the alpha adrenergic blockers what is the main uh, action of this alpha adrenergic uh, blockers are they reduce they, re they relax the smooth muscle thereby increase the free urinary flow the main mechanism of action of this alpha adrenergic blockers are uh, alpojosin or tamoxifen is tamoxifen is they reduce the or they relax the smooth muscle of the urethra thereby it provides uh, free urinary flow up to 6 to 70% of the cases that is the main advantage of the alpha adrenergic blockers and next coming to the five alpha reductase inhibitors the examples for this uh, alpha reductase inhibitors are phenastrid and dibutrastrid uh, phenastrid is uh, most important one and dibu and next one is dibutrastrid like that name so the mechanism of action of this alpha reductase inhibitors are they reduce the size of the uh, bphs or they shrink the size of the uh, benign prostatic gland the prostate um, size is reduced or uh, the they, it, it is slow the it is slow the growth of the growth of the prostate it reduces the or it shrinks the um, prostate size that is a main mechanism of action of the alpha reductase inhibitors they shrink the mass alpha adrenergic blockers they relax the smooth muscle these are the two important actions of these two drugs and next coming to the surgical approaches they are divided into closed surgical approaches and open surgical procedures under closed surgical procedures that is transurethral resection of the prostate and second one is trans urethral insertion of the prostate or uh, thermotherapy thermotherapy these are the two closed uh, surgical procedures of the bph next coming to the open surgical procedures that those are suprapubic prostatectomy and retropubic prostatectomy and perineal prostatectomy these are the three important open surgical procedures under um, surgical methods so transurethral insertion not the resection by mistake um, it was uh, typed by mistake here the transurethral insertion of the prostate or thermochemotherapy is an outpatient basis procedure of delivery of microwaves so this transurethral resection of the prostate is nothing but insertion not resection is nothing but delivery of the microwaves directly to the prostate through the transurethral probe so this usually indicated in whenever there is a tumor size is more than 100 100 cm cube then the procedure of choice is when the tumor is large then the surgical procedure of choice is transurethral resection of the prostate by microwaves next coming to the transurethral resection removal of the prostate tissue is in or resectoscope inserted through the urethra under spinal or general anesthesia this is a removal of the prostate tissue that is the procedure is transurethral resection of the prostate and coming to the open surgical procedures suprapubic prostatectomy and next coming to the perineal prostatectomy next coming to the retropubic prostatectomy so and we have to advise dietary advice um, uh, uh, regarding diet management include we have to advise a fiber diet and easily digestible food to, to avoid this bph and 
we have you know, also advised tools, uh, softeners, and avoid heavy alcohol intake. And uh, we have to advise weight reduction, and we have to advise sometimes sexual intercourse. These are all the various preventive measures. So this is all about BPH. So definition and risk factors and clinical manifestations and investigations. Next, next medical management and surgical management. Medical, under medical management, we have to advise two important drugs, alpha adenoreceptor, uh, adenoreceptors and 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. You have to remember those two drugs. Next, coming to the prostate cancer. This prostate cancer is the carcinoma of the prostate gland that may spread. The importance of why we should know about the prostate cancer is it has very um, it has very uh, metastatic spread to the various organs. So it is the primary um, cancer. It metastasizes to the various organs of the body. So we have a um, little bit idea about prostate cancer. It, it has a very aggressive spread to the other parts of the body. So, particularly mainly bones and lymph nodes. So, what is the pathophysiology of this carcinoma of the prostate? In prostate cancer, the glands, there is an overproduction of these uh, uh, prostate glands, usually due to some abnormal mutations. The mutations are mainly P53 gene or uh, BCL2 or Broca's L2 and ERKS or alteration in the AKT kinase mutations. Remember these two P53 gene and BCL2 and ERK5 or alteration in the AKT kinase sign signaling the development of the prostate cancer. So, abnormal mutations. P53 gene, genetical um, abnormality. The prostate gland requires hormones known as androgens that are involved in the survival and apoptosis. So the main hormones responsible for this development of carcinoma prostate are testosterone, dihydroepiandrosterone, and dihydrotestosterone, mainly hormonal etiology and genetic etiology in the form of abnormal mutations. And initially, there is a small clumps of the cancer cells remaining remain confined to the prostate gland. That condition is known as carcinoma in situ. So the carcinoma cells, particularly confined to the prostate glands, that condition is known as carcinoma in situ or prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia or PAN. So over time, after some time, these cancer cells begin to multiply and spread to the surrounding prostate tissue, forming a tumor. At the first, at the time of onset, they usually confined to the prostate in the form of carcinoma, carcinoma of in situ. And over time, these cancer cells begin to multiply and spread to the surrounding prostate tissue, forming a tumor. Eventually, the tumor may grow large enough to invade the nearby organs, such as nearby lymph nodes and rectum, and metastasis to the bone and lymphatic system and bladder. These are the major uh, organs where the uh, carcinoma of the prostate usually metastasizes. Next, next coming to the risk factors. What are the, what are the various risk factors responsible for the development of carcinoma of prostate? First one is obesity. Next one is gays. Usually males over the 60 years and family history. And so vitamin D, lower levels of vitamin D and prostatic infections, prostatitis infections and inflammations and elevated blood levels of testosterone. So these are all risk factors for the development of carcinoma prostate. Age, family history, reduced vitamin D levels, and prostatic inflammations and infections, and elevated testosterone levels. Next, coming to the symptoms, presentation of the patient. So mainly urinary symptoms in the form of interrupted urine flow due to that uh, obstruction of the prostatic urethra by the um, enlargement of the prostatic, abnormal enlargement of the prostatic gland and blood in urine, hematuria and nocturia and dysuria and pain in the pelvis and spine and ribs due to the metastasis to the bones produces pain in the pelvis and spine and ribs and lymphedema and renal insufficiency. These are all the 
characteristic symptoms all are urinary symptoms and um, bone symptoms pain in the pelvis spine and ribs and all due to metastasis next how how do we diagnose what are the various parameters in diagnosing the carcinoma of the prostate so the tumor marker for the carcinoma of the prostate is prostate specific antigen blood test prostate prostate specific antigen or psa is a protein produced by the prostate gland all men have a small amount of psa in their blood normally when it increases with the age prostate cancer can increase the production of psa and it uh, this took uh, this test looks for the raised levels of psa in the blood that may be a sign of condition in it in its early stages usually the psa is present in normal healthy individuals in small amounts whenever there is a increased levels of psa that leads to the um, ca prostate so psa levels usually below the 2.5 mostly psa levels up to 4 mg per ml is considered as normal if whenever the, that uh, levels increased above the 4 mg per ml the, then the doctor should often recommended recommend a prostate biopsy so depending upon the psa levels we have to advise prostate biopsy whenever there is a increased levels of the psa more than 4 mg per ml to determine whether the prostate uh, cancer was present or not so if psa level is very high cancer has probably spread beyond the prostate so if the psa levels are very in high then we can suspect that uh, cancer has probably spread beyond the prostatic gland so next coming to the Diagnose, next uh, diagnostic parameter is digital rectal examination so this one is very very important uh, in clinical point of view next parameter is first one is tumor marker estimation that is psa and next coming to the digital rectal examination what are the uh, findings we have to suspect while doing this uh, rectal examination it is useful ruling out the prostate enlargement caused by benign prostatic hyperplasia so what is the characteristic nature of uh, prostate on rectal examination in, in case of ca prostate is on examination it is nodular in nature the prostate is nodular in nature and stony hard in consistency and there is a loss of median sulcus so there is obliteration of the median sulcus so these are all the three important points we have to observe while doing the rectal examination one is nodularity it has multiple nodules and second one is stony hard in consistency and third one is there is a obliteration of the median sulcus huh? these three things we have to observe while doing the rectal examination and the diagnostic features for the ca ca prostate and next Um, diagnostic parameter is biopsy this aid is the, this aid the diagnosis and help and determine the gleason scoring so the importance of the biopsy is the for the scoring for the scoring that is scoring is called as gleason scoring for the carcinoma of the prostate what is this uh, gleason scoring and what is the importance of uh, uh, by scoring this uh, biopsy material is to know the quickly spread and um, quickly nature of the cancer cells spread of the cancer cells to know the uh, to see the how quickly the cancer will spread so this is the importance of this scoring system how quickly the cancer will spread is diagnosed by this scoring system that scoring system is gleason score and to measure the now depending upon the gleason scoring system if the score is usually uh, the, the low the score the less likely the cancer will spread if the score is 6 or less means the cancer is unlikely to spread if it is a 7 means there is a moderate chance of spread if it is 8 or above there is a significant chance of cancer will spread so to know the cancer spread this is the, this one is the most important scoring system and next diagnostic parameter is mri and ct scan to know the metastatic metastatic sites to assess the extension of the tumor 
into the bladder or into the lymph nodes and we have to stage the cancer depending upon the mri and ct scan and and to evaluate the bone metastasis and next coming to the treatment of the carcinoma of the prostate first one is by surgical procedure by prostate prostatectomy removal of the prostate and second one is radiotherapy first one is surgical and second one is radiotherapy so radiotherapy is divided into two one is external beam radiotherapy and second one is brachial radiotherapy what do you mean by external beam radiotherapy means radiation directed towards the whole pelvis externally and what is brachial therapy means the radioactive seeds are placed in the body close to the tumor so the radioactive seeds are placed in the body close to the tumor that is known as brachial therapy or radioactive seeds so radiotherapy is divided into two two types one is external beam radiotherapy and second one is brachial radiotherapy and next coming to the third treatment of choice is hormonal therapy mainly the carcinoma prostate is mainly due to excessive hormone levels of you know, estrogen testosterone and androgens so the goal is to reduce that hormone levels um, called as androgens in the body to prevent them from reaching the prostate cancer uh, cells and what are the various uh, hormones which prevents that excessive levels of uh, testosterone namely lh blockers the examples of lh blockers include luprorelin and uh, gasrelin and buprelin and treptorelin relin and histrelin so these are all lh hormone blockers they are also given as in the form of injections under the skin and the second uh, one is under hormonal therapy anti androgens after lh blockers next one is anti androgens these anti androgens stop the androgens from working by binding to the receptors and stop testosterone to bind with the receptors to that concerned to and cannot able to grow the tumor mass so what are the examples of androgens so few examples bicalutamide and flutamide and angelutamide so remember any two of these drugs and these anti androgen treatment may combine with the, the above lh blockers as a first line hormone therapy so this is called as combined androgen blockers cab so lh hormone blockers plus anti androgens these combined androgen blockers is known as cab or cab or combined androgen blockers next coming to the triple androgen blockers and second one is and uh, next one is n gelutamide and next one is abiraterone these are all the hormonal drugs and zytica is an oral androgen biosynthesis inhibitor that works by inhibiting the cyp17 enzyme complex and another uh, newer drugs or arteronel works in a similar way and abiraterol these are all the new drugs being studied for the prevention of the carcinoma of the prostate and next coming to the final one chemotherapy chemotherapy is sometimes used if the prostate has prostate ha cancer has spread outside the prostate gland and hormone therapy is not working for prostate cancer chemotherapeutic drugs are typically used one at a time some of the chemo drugs used to treat uh, prostate cancer include docetaxel and cabazitoxel and doxorubicin and etoxide and vinblastin these are all the chemotherapeutic drugs we usually advise so these are all the four modes of uh, um, treatment of carcinoma of the prostate one by one is surgical and second one is second one is by radiotherapy by external or brachial radiotherapy and third one is hormonal ther therapy with the help of lh uh, hormonal blockers and anti androgens and fourth one is chemotherapy with the help of these chemotherapeutic drugs and finally vaccination is a cancer vaccine used to treat advanced prostatic cancer most vaccines are uh, designed to prevent the disease 
but this vaccine is aimed at treating prostate cancer not preventing it so these are the five modes when vaccination is the it used to treating the prostate cancer but not for prevention of this prostate cancer so this is all about management and management of marsno of the prostate so bph and cf prostate medical management is very very important according to theory point of view